Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. We have started our training with SAP Basis and NetWeaver training with what is ERP. In the second topic, we have seen concentrated more on SAP. We have come to know like what is SAP and the basic architecture of an SAP system. Now, we will go into more technical details of an SAP system. So, we will see the architecture of an SAP system in this topic. We have seen earlier what is SAP NetWeaver. So, SAP NetWeaver AS, AS stands for Application Server is the result of the logical development of technology used by the SAP Application Server. Known previously, it is known as SAP Basis. So, originally, the SAP technology platform was known as SAP Basis. Now, it is known as SAP NetWeaver. So, first we had the Basis Server. Then, next came the Web Application Server. And now, it is only known as Application Server. And the technology platform is known as SAP NetWeaver. So, this is the three-tier architecture of an SAP system. So, we have already seen it earlier. It has three layers and the client server architecture. We have the presentation layer, the application layer and the database level. So, in the presentation layer, uh, uh, the requests are either fetched from an SAP GUI or from web, whatever it is. So, the requests come from SAP GUI or the browser. Then it comes to the SAP, that is the application level. So, here we can have two types of systems. As we have seen earlier, one is the ABAP stack used to process the SAP ABAP programs and the other one is the Java stack. Okay, This is used to process the the requests okay and then in the bottom we have the database okay now this SAP system can also be connected to other external SAP or non SAP systems as well so this is the from the top level if anybody wants to know what is an SAP server this is this is what it is so it's a three tier architecture with presentation application and database levels now, SAP NetWeaver provides the following runtime environments. The ABAP runtime environment as ABAP, as ABAP provides the runtime environment for programs written in ABAP. And the next one is the Java run runtime environment as Java, as Java is an application server based on Java 2 Enterprise Edition standards. And as of SAP Web Application Server 6.2, SAP has provided a complete Java EEE means Enterprise Edition compatible runtime infrastructure. So, starting from VAS Web Application Server SAP version 6.20 or 6.2, SAP has provided even Java compatible runtime environment as well. Okay, so this is what SAP NetWeaver is nothing but it's a technology platform, and this is the three tier architecture of an SAP system. We, we can have two types of environments, ABAP and Java. Now, going into further details, what is an SAP instance? So, this is, this is the presentation of an SAP instance now. Now, there are two terms here. One is an SAP system and the other one is an SAP instance. An SAP system is an installed software system that provides a defined set of functions that are a part of an SAP solution. It consists of a database of one or more application server instances that could be a web or Java, a central services that is the message and NQ server and other optional components depending on the system. The system is identified by its SAP system ID. It is a three digit three digits or three letters okay now an SAP system is nothing but it's the actual the software system which provides the uh, 
defined set of functions okay then it has a database and it can have one or more application instances which can be a combination of a app or java and a central services okay later we'll see what are these central services are and other optional components depending on the system and every sap system it, it consists of three letters or digits example like a b c or something like d c 0 okay or d whatever it is anything it can be like d c 0 d p 0 like that so it's a three digit or a three letter word now an sap instance an instance is an administrative unit that combines the sap systems components together to provide one or more services the services provided by an instant are started or stopped together a common instant profile is used to set the parameters of the components in an instance each instance has its own buffer areas an instance is identified by the system id and the instance number now sap system is the entire software okay an instance is nothing but it's the administrative unit that combines the sap system components together to provide one or more services so an sap instance is is a subset of an sap system an sap system can have, can have one or more sap instances okay so this instance is stopped or started together okay and we have an instance profile we have come across these in our earlier training also an instance is stopped what all the services an instance will provide those are all are started or stopped together it will have a profile okay which is used to define the parameters of that instance okay the specifications of that instance it has its own buffer areas okay now this instance is identified by the sap system id like previously i have said dc0 or dp0 and the instance number so if you take dc0 as an sap system so you can have instance 00 or whatever 01 then you can see like this instance is dc001 dc002 like that so an sap instance is a it's always a subset of an sap system an sap system can have one or more instances so this is what this is from the client from the clients either through an sap gui or a web browser this is the sap system okay so here we will have it will have a central service as we have said earlier okay and the central instance then we have additional instances also like dialog instance okay in our next slides we'll see like what is the central instance and dialog instances so and this is the database level okay so this is one this is two second instance and this is third instance like this okay now the next one what is this central instance okay i have said like each instance has its own number so here it is 00 01 02 03 like that now for as a pack the central instance provides the message server and the end queue process all other instances of the system are typically called dialog instances if the central instance in the database that is and the central services instance for as java if they are installed on the same computer the computer is referred to as a central system okay now uh, present we will discuss about abap stack okay so abap stack the central instance provides this message and nq services also okay don't worry we'll see like what is this message and nq you know services are so as of now the central instance means for an app, app it provides this message and nq services the all other instances they are known as here dialog instances now if the central instance and the database are on the same computer it is known as central system so the database can be installed on the same host or a different host okay sap uh, 
processing can be separated from the database processing also. So you can have the database on the same host or you can have a database on a different host. Generally, SAP follows the database to be installed on the same host only. So if the database and the, the central instance is on the same system, it is known as a central system. In the others, you can have n number of dialog instances. Okay. Now, what is an SAP logon pad? SAP logon shows a list of SAP systems. This list is taken from a file on the front end. SAP logon.ini, which is centrally pre-configured and provided for end users. Now we have one SAP system. So each one of us have to log on to that system. So I have my own laptop, you have your own laptop, so that we have n number of users connected to the SAP system. So if you are connecting from an desktop GUI, so we will have an SAP GUI.exe file. So if you open that, we will have an SAP logon pad. This this SAP logon 720C. This this is open. So here we will have all the systems. Okay. And the systems are maintained in this SAP logon.ini file. So each one of us should have that GUI program and the SAP logon pad. So when you that GUI, it fetches all the what all the systems are to be presented on my particular uh, you know SAP GUI interface from the SAP logon.ini file. So everyone, like whomever wants to access the SAP system from an S desktop GUI, they should have this uh, SAP GUI logon pad. So through that, we will open this. So we are now we are discussing about this presentation layer. Now, once if you double click on any of the system, this is how the SAP screen is presented. You will have a client, user, password, and a language. So client, this term we have come across earlier. Client is an independent business unit. Okay. So depending, we so just to make things easier to reduce the cost, this client concept has come, wherein the data in an SAP system is divided. Okay, based on the roles. Okay. So um, uh, based on the roles or business. So a particular set of users, if they want only a particular set of data always, then they log on to a particular client. That is how it is divided. So now when, see the system will be the same, but it can have n clients. So that, that's why when you click on any system, so you have to give like what client you want to log into that, your username and your password and the language. By default, you can have uh, English and German because it's a piece of German company. But additional uh, languages can also be installed. When when the actual system is you know installed, you can set up additional languages also. So that through this, any user will connect to a SAP system. So you open the SAP GUI, okay? So based on the logon SAP logon .ini file which is here on your desktop, those systems are listed. I can have a separate logon .ini. You can have a separate logon .ini. Okay. So whatever systems you want are maintained in this file. And SAP GUI.exe is nothing but it's the it's the program which is used to connect to the SAP server from our client. So we both will have SAP GUI like seven point seven twenty. I can have an SAP a logon.ini file different from yours because maybe I am working on a different customer, you are working on a different customer, our systems will be different of course. So through that you open any of the system, you double click it okay, and then you have to enter the client, your username and password. So then you will connect to the SAP system. Okay. Now once when you connect, if your username and password are validated, you connect to the SAP system. So this is how the initial screen appears. Yeah, it is. The user menu for SAP Tech. Yeah. This is the first screen, how you will see 
an SAP system looks like. The SAP Easy Access screen is automatically displayed after logging on. The screen represents the standard access point to an SAP system in an SAP GUI for Windows. So once here I have, you know, opened my SAP GUI dot program, then you know I have entered my username and password. Now this is the first screen which is presented to me. So here you can have your favorite list or you can have a role based menu. So here whatever this menu is displayed, it is up to the user. Okay. So if I add any favorites like those which I frequently similar to our Internet Explorer, we maintain bookmarks, favorites. So like here you can maintain some favorite list. Okay. Some important transactions can be whatever you access more, you can maintain them. So that is user, it can be customized by the user. The next one is the role based menu. Now you can have SAP standard menu also. Okay, so whatever you can switch between those two menus. Okay, so whatever the screen should be presented to you, you can adjust it. Now we will see like what are the basic components of this SAP GUI screen. Now, the first one is, this is the first, the top one is the menu bar. Okay, here you can see like edit, go to like that. See here, menu, edit, favorites, extra, system, help. So that is the menu. The next one is the system toolbar. This, the second line is the system toolbar. Then here you have always have a box, which is known as the command field. Okay, this one, whatever the screen, you know, heading or the definition is here, it is SAP Easy Access, here is Maintain User Profile, that is the title bar of that screen. Then next one, you have the application toolbar, the, the fourth line. The fourth line is the application toolbar. Okay, and then the actual SAP screen. At the bottom, you have a status bar. Okay, which will tell you like what system you are logged on to, which user, which client, if you just click on this, okay. Okay, which system, user, client, which instance you are logged on to, that information. And in that, any screen, you can have like the input fields and tab pages or whatever, push buttons, how the screen is customized, all those will be presented here. So the basic structure is on the top, you'll have the menu bar, the system toolbar, the title bar, then the application toolbar and here you have the command field. Again, this is important. Here SAP like what all you want to access that you will put it here. Okay. And you will just press and enter. So you will be navigated to that particular screen. And at the bottom you have a status bar. So once you log on to a system, this is the first screen which is presented. From here, you can maintain your own favorite, favorite list of transactions. In SAP, like whatever activity we perform, it is called as a transaction. Okay. So in our next topic, we'll go into details like what an SAP, SAP transaction is about. Okay. So you can maintain your favorite list of transactions here. And you will have your role based menu or SAP standard menu. Role based menu means my role can be different from yours. Now I am in, uh, managing finance. So my role is different. Say you are from the sales team, SD. So your role is different. So what all transactions I do is different from yours. So my transactions will be presented here and your transactions will be presented on your screen. Okay. But or you can switch it to the SAP standard menu like that is same for all of us. So those can be maintained here and favorite list it is like up to us like what we customize it. The next one is like this is the actual elements the screen elements of an SAP GUI screen. Now so that that's what is about the presentation layer so how a user is connected and you know what are the initial screen presented and and from there like how you can navigate it so here you can give any commands in this command field you can give the transaction name or commands so basing on that we will be navigated to that particular screen 
Now, what are the possible types of SAP NetWeaver application servers? Now, SAP has made some changes. Okay, from 3.1 now we are on like 7.4 now. Okay, so from 7.0 x and lower, the structure was a bit different. In above like 7. Point, the later releases okay so 7.1 and higher the SAP has made, uh, done some structural changes to its architecture now this version 7.0 and lower if we see an ABAP stack this is how it looks Java and you can have a dual stack system also that is ABAP plus Java now if we see this ABAP system okay Previously, I have told like in my first slide, what is an AP, SAP instances? So, you can have any number of instances. You have one database. So, here like it's the ABAP database. So, and we have come across one term known as services. Message, server and gateway server. So, in an ABAP system, you don't have any different central services. The central services are combined in the central instance so we have the message server the gateway server icm internet communication manager this is a term which we have come across in our second topic this is used to get the request from the web to an abap server so an icm you have an abap dispatcher and then you have different work process the work process is nothing but it's a process through which the actual task is processed in the SAP system so like that this is known as the central instance or the central system then you can have additional dialogue instances the dialogue instances don't have any message server for an SAP system you have only one message server but each instance will have its own gateway server and ICM and it has its own dispatcher and all the work process you, at the bottom you have only one database so in a bad system okay the actual central instance comprises of we are talking about 7.0 x and lower versions this is the architecture so you have only one message server for the entire system every instance has a dispatcher a gateway icm internet communication manager and the different types of work process now coming to a java system you have the java database here here the central services like the message service and the nq service are maintained separately okay then the central instance has the java dispatcher and the server process you have one more known as the software deployment manager so the instance having the software deployment manager is known as the central instance and the others are the dialogue instances which have only the java dispatcher and the server process okay so in ABAP where you find the message server it's the central instance in the java where you see the stm that is the software deployment manager it is the central instances here also you have ABAP dispatcher java dispatcher here you have web process here you have server process okay so in addition the ABAP system will have its own gateway and internet communication manager uh, each instance has its own gateway and icm and here you don't have any concept of icm okay so here you have this message server and the nq server but here this these services are the NQ and the message are part of the central instance only. Coming to this dual stack. Dual stack is nothing but just a combination of these two. So you have the database which, which will process both store or process both the ABAP and Java requests. So here also the ABAP central instance will have its own message server and gate, gateway server and the others are common. Okay, you can have a number of instances with the dispatchers, the work process, the gateway and the ICM services. And similarly, you have the own central instance of the Java where you have STM, 
the dispatcher and the server process and you can have n number of such instances with dispatcher and server process and you have a separate central service also for the NQ and the message server this is the dual stack uh, dual stack classic examples are this SAP process integration the exchange infrastructure systems and the SAP solution manager are examples of this dual stack systems okay so this this is about 7.0x and lower versions now from 7.1 and higher versions sap has made some slight changes okay coming to abap system the application server of abap technically there are no changes okay uh, architecture wise there are no changes okay abap dispatcher is there the central instance has the ABAP message service and the NQ service. Okay, you can have any number of dialogue instances with the dispatcher, gateway, ICM, and the work process. But here, just the naming convention has changed. Okay, this is known as the primary application server. Previously, it's known as central instance, now it's known as primary application server. And before we used to call them as additional dialogue instances. Now it's known as additional application servers. So we have a primary application service server where which has the it's nothing but the instance which has the message and the NQ service. And we have additional application servers. Each application server has its own dispatcher, gateway, ICM, and n number of work process and the database. So architecture wise, there is no change in ABAP system. Coming to the Java system, what SAP has made some changes. So previously there was something known as the Java dispatcher. So SAP has removed it and now we have the internet communication manager here also. So every instance will have an ICM and n number of server process. Okay. And the, in the central service, previously we used to have only message and NQ service. So here SAP has added gateway service also. Okay. And at the bottom we have the Java database. Now when we see this dual stack system, same the ABAP is there. So if it's a dual stack system, per one application server you have only one ICM, which both the ABAP and the Java, the ABAP work process and the Java server process use it. Okay. Then uh, the central services remain the same, same that is NQ message and gateway services for the Java systems. Okay, and the additional application servers have here also you have the gateway, ABAP dispatcher, ABAP work process, ICM, and the server process. Okay, and here you have the ABAP and the Java, whatever the database here. Now, when it is dual stack you might have a question like i have sent a web request how it will you know identify and go to this app app or you know the java stack so here the icm will differentiate like whether it's you know an app app you know it has to go to the app work process or the java you know server process based on the request type so if it's a webdin pro app app webdin pro request they will be sent to app app instances or if it is a java uh, you know server pages okay it will be jsp request it will go to the java part okay in a dual stack see this is one instance only these are not two different instances abap and java on one instance only you have both abap work process and java server java server, server process okay it's nothing but just the combination you just club these together and that's how the dual stack is made and here the ABAP and the Java in one instance they you know communicate through a concept known as SAP Java connectors JECO okay later we will see like what this JECO is when we learn more about Java stack so as of now the ABAP and the Java the connections are made using SAP Java connectors. Okay, so in SAP Netweaver, 
application server 7.1 and higher releases the architecture of app is not changed only the java art system architecture is changed and the naming convention previously we called them as central instance now it's known as primary application server the dialog instances are now known as additional application servers that's it okay in java stack the dispatcher concept is removed and we have only the icm now and even that software deployment manager is also discontinued now we will see what we will go into more details of the architecture of a app application server so so this is the central instance and the dialog instance or the primary application server and additional application servers so the primary application server in an a app okay so web, you can have like the request coming from web or you know sap gui web request go to icm whereas the sap gui request they go to the app dispatcher okay so the central one has additional services like the gateway and the message server you have the dispatcher and the work process here okay what is this ddve bs these are all work process so in our next topic we'll go into more details of what what or what are the different types of work process are present in an sap you know system so the additional instances or the dialog instances they don't have this gateway and message services okay you have the icm and the gateway and you have the dispatcher and the work process in a app 7.0x versions and lower the central instance is distingu distinguished by the fact that the message server and the nq process run there all other instances of the system are called dialog here they are known as dialog instances for sap netweaver application server a app no changes were made from an architectural point of view between 7.0x and higher releases in 7.1 and above only the terms the central instance was renamed to primary application server and the dialog instance is renamed to additional application server if you are accessing a app, app system using web protocol such as http in a browser the icm receives the request i told you right all web requests come to icm the icm forwards that request to the dispatcher of the instance that is allocated after load balancing so here this load balancing is again done by this message server okay so the message server does the load balancing okay and it helps in communication among the various instances so if we have only one instance then there is no concept of load balancing if we have n number of instances then message server helps in that load balancing now the next one is these are the different uh, work process and services of an sap system the message server the gateway the icm internet communication manager the app dispatcher then these are the different types of work process we'll look into them in detail in the coming topics so the dialog update background log management that is the nq and the spool now the available work process are as follows a dialog work process fulfills all requests for the execution of dialog steps triggered by an active user every dispatcher requires at least two dialog work process so it's actually the dialog work process which does the processing of any request which which comes from the sap gui and every dispatcher when we say every dispatcher it implies that every instance should have at least two dialog work process then the spool work process passes a sequential flow of data to the printers at least one spool work process is required for each sap system it is possible to configure more than one spool work process for each dispatcher so every sap system should have one spool work process okay and it, this spool work process helps in the data flow to the printers like to enable printing if you want or if you don't want printing also every sap system should have one spool work process and of course you can have more than 
one spool work process as well. And generally, the spool work process is configured in the primary application server, that is the central instance. Update work process execute update requests. Similar to spool work process, you need at least one update work process per SAP system. You can configure more than one update work process per dispatcher. So, uh, likewise to spool work process, every SAP system should have one update work process which is used to process the update. Database update requests are processed using this and you can have more than one update work process. The next one is the background work process. This executes the program that runs without interacting with the user. For the normal operation of an SAP system, a single pro background process would be sufficient. But for an upgrade or the import of a BAP transport request, you require a second background work process. You can configure more than one background work process for each dispatcher. Again, these background work processes are like See, there are some long running transactions which don't require any input or interaction from the user now and then. So, such long running ones are, they can be executed using this background work process. And generally, in an SAP system, one background work process is sufficient. But for an upgrade, SAP upgrades, or you, if you have to import some transport requests. Okay. So, this import of transport requests, again, like, it's a vast concept transports so we'll just have a look at it later so as of now like when i say importments like if any change has to go into the system it is it comes in form of a transport okay so to import such uh, requests you will need a second background work process and of course you can have more than one background work process for each dispatcher the NQ work process administers the log table in the shared memory. The table contains the logical database logs of the ABAP runtime environment. Only one NQ process is needed for each SAP system. So when we come in to the NQ work process, it helps you know to administer the log table in the shared memory. So it, database is there but every sap instance will have some shared memory so this concept of locking you know what is this concept of locking we'll discuss later so the purpose of locking is to maintain consistency of the data in the database you know tables so generally one nq process is needed for each sap system Configuration of additional NQ work process has to be done on the same instance as the first NQ work process because these work process have to access the same log table. So that's what the primary application server has the message service and the NQ work process as we have told earlier. So you can have more than one NQ work process but it has to be on the same instance. So that's why generally the message server and these NQ work process are kept on one instance and that is known as the primary application server. The rest all they can have n number of background work process, dialogue work process and update work process as well and spool. Okay. The rights and the number of work process to be started for each instance are configured using the SAP system profile parameter. So in every instance has one SAP profile. Okay, so that will define like how many work processes are there of each of these types. And when we say like only one dialogue, two dialogue process, work processes are required per instance, ideally in a production environment, okay, when a system has gone live and it's running and where there are so many users, like two work process and one work process will not be sufficient, we will have many work process okay when i say at least like two that is just at least the minimum value which is required similarly when i say like one background work process is required in a SAP system it doesn't mean only one you will have more than generally practically coming when you know systems are up and running you'll have more than one generally you'll have uh, uh many like update work process okay and spool as well but this NQ work process, there will be few, they will be maintained on this primary application server. 
additional services of the ABAP runtime system. In addition to the work process, the ABAP runtime system provides the following service. These are services. These are not work process for internal and external communication. The message server handles communication between the distributed dispatchers within the application server ABAP, which enables the scalability of several parallel application servers. The message server is configured only once per SAP system. So this message server, it handles the communication between the various dispatchers, the instances. So that is how like we can add SAP system becomes scalable. We can have n number of application servers depending upon our needs. And this is configured only once per every SAP system will have only one message server. Means this is a service. Okay. The next one is the gateway process. This enables the communication among SAP systems or between SAP and external systems. There is only one gateway per dispatcher. Similarly, this gateway service. It helps in communication between SAP systems or SAP to an external system and we will have one gateway per dispatcher, so per SAP instance. The Internet Communication Manager enables communication with the SAP system by using web protocols such as HTTP. The ICM receives requests from the client and forwards them to an SAP system for processing. In an ABAP plus Java system, the ICM recognizes whether the request is called for ABAP or Java and forwards the request accordingly. The ICM can also direct HTTP request from an SAP system to a web server and send the response from the web server back to the SAP system. So this ICM is a critical one when there is web request. Okay, So it gets the request and it forwards them you know, uh, into the ABAP system for processing. And this, when there is a dual tag, dual stack, when we have both ABAP and Java. So this ICM helps in, you know, identifying and disputing accordingly. Okay, it will identify like whether it's an ABAP web intro request or, you know, a JSP page. Okay, and then it sends it accordingly. And this also directs requests from the SAP system to the web server and send the response from the web server back to the SAP system. So these three are services, the message server, the NQ and the ICM. Okay, so we'll just go through, you know, what all we have seen today. So we have first started with, you know, the overview of what is an SAP NetWeaver. Okay, so it's the platform. Earlier it was called as basis, the three layers. Okay, we will have two types of you know environments, the ABAP and the Java. From 6.20, the SAP had started you know providing a complete support for Java compatible programs. The next one we have seen what is an SAP instance. So we have seen the definitions like what is a system and an instance. So a system is nothing but it provides all the functions that are part, part of an SAP solution and then instance is nothing but it's an administrative unit okay so an SAP system can have one or more instances okay so the presentation layer has the GUI or the web browser then the application layer has one or more instances and at the bottom we have the database okay then the next one is how yeah, the central instance, okay, the central instance is the one which has the message and the NQ. So wherever you find this message and NQ services, that will form the central instance of a ABAP system. For Java, this message and NQ service are kept on central services, okay. If the central instance and the database are installed on the same computer, then the computer is referred to as a central system okay then we have seen like what is the logon pad okay so the sap gui.exe file is the program which in which you know helps the client to communicate with the sap server and each client uh, should have an sap logon.ini file where all the systems are listed so each client 
will have one GUI program and this SAP logon.ini file. So once we can select a system and we, you know, log in, this is the initial screen where we have to give the client, the user, the password and the language. Then we have seen like what is the first screen which is presented once we log on successfully log on to an SAP system. Then we have seen, seen like what are the screen elements of an SAP GUI. Next we have seen like what are the possible types of SAP NetWeaver application servers. So SAP made some changes from 7.1 release. So 7.0x and lower versions. This is an ABAP system where we have dispatcher, the gateway, the message server, the ICM and the work process. Okay, so where we see that the NQ work process and the message server that is known as the central instance, we can have n number of instances. Every instance will have dispatcher, gateway, ICM and a set of work process. Coming to the Java, we have the Java dispatcher and the server process. So with the software deployment manager is configured that is that is called as the central instance and we have a central service where the java and the message service are kept and we have the java database coming to the abap plus java dual stack just these two are combined so we'll have abap dispatcher java dispatcher here we have a number of work process here we have server process Every ABAP, ABAP dispatcher is accompanied by a gateway and an ICM. And when the message server, the NQ server and the STM are kept, that is known as the central instance. The other instances will have the ABAP Java dispatcher, the different types of work process, server process, the gateway and the ICM. Okay. So classic examples of dual stack systems are the process integration and the XI and the solution manager. Now from 7.1 in higher releases, the ABAP stack, the architecture of ABAP stack is same, just the naming conventions are changed. The central instance is called as the primary application server and the other dialogue instances are known as additional application servers. So coming to the ABAP stack, there is no change in architecture wise, there is no change. But in the Java system, SAP has made some changes. So the, there is no concept of Java dispatcher anymore. We have the ICM and even the software dis, uh, deployment manager is discontinued. So there is one more service added in the central services that is the message service, NQ service and the gateway service has been added. So here the ICM helps in dispatching the re request to various server process. So both combined is the dual stack. So we have a single ICM for both ABAP dispatcher and it also sends the request to the different server process. Okay, if it's from a Java, if it's from a Java application. Then here this ABAP dispatcher will still have its own message server gateway and NQ services. And the central services of the Java part are maintained separately. We have the Java message and gateway service for the Java components. And this Java part, it communicates with the ABAP part using SAP Java connectors. Okay, so here we have seen like ideally what is the architecture of an ABAP system. Then, so this ICM helps in, you know, identifying if the, if the request, if you have a dual stack, then this ICM finds, gets to know like whether it's for the Java not the app and it dispatches accordingly okay then this is of app okay so here it's having one central instance on the primary application server and the dialog instances on the additional application servers okay the web, web all the web requests they go to the icm and the app GUI request they go to the dispatcher and this message server helps in load balancing okay next we have seen like what are the different types of services and the work process so we have three services like message service gateway service and the ICM 
we have dialog background and queue that is the log spool and update work process okay so we should have at least two dialog work process for every instance okay we can have one or more spool work process similarly we can have one or more update work process and we can have one or more background work process and the NQ work process is generally only one but you can configure more than one but all the NQ work process should reside on a single instance and it's the profile you know uh, of each instance where we can set like how many work process we want of each type and finally we have seen like what are the three types of services of the app runtime system so this is the basic architectural overview of an sap system okay so mostly we will discuss the ABAP stack first and after we complete the ABAP stack then we will move on to the java stack thank you once again